Good evening and um, welcome to a Course in Miracles text. Uh, we're on chapter five and um, the, main, the main theme of chapter five is healing and wholeness. And of course, healing is applicable specifically first and foremost to the mind because what heals is the mind. I mean, the body is the, the effect of wrong-minded thinking. So we don't try and heal the effect we try, we work on healing um, the mind that brings about the effects. So this, this chapter is the Holy Spirit and Christ's mind addressing us again as the decision maker, as the dreamer that has fallen asleep and dreamt up the, the dream of separation and saying, this is how you go about healing yourself through the Holy Spirit, which is the memory for God. So remember when I say the word Holy Spirit, or whenever you read the text and it says Holy Spirit, remember Holy Spirit's not an entity, although it often is ascribed certain qualities. Um, and furthermore, it is like forgiveness. Holy Spirit is a temporal, um, temporal essence that remains only while we're in dream state. The minute we awaken, the Holy Spirit being the memory in your mind, in the decision maker's mind, then dissolves because you, you've moved fully into the Christ mind, the Son of God mind, and there is no need for a, an energy that intercedes between the fully conscious state of God and the subconscious, unconscious mind of the Son of God dreaming a dream of separation or the universe. So let's get started. Um, healing and wholeness is really a bit of a play on words because it's the same thing. Wholeness is healing and healing is wholeness. And uh, let's just dive straight into it. On the first section of, of chapter five, the introduction, it starts off quite, quite clearly also to bring us into a new perspective of what healing is. And it starts off by saying to heal is to make happy. And think of, think of someone who's sick. It's impossible to really be happy and joyous when you're feeling all you know, slotty headache or you know, a bug of some sort. So, and when you're happy, you, you're feeling, you feel, when you feel well, you feel happy. And so from a mental state, from addressing the dreamer, addressing the dreamer who needs to make a decision where he wants to place his focus, his mind, and to who does he want to give the authority to wrong-minded ego, which is just an idea, or right-minded ego, which is also an idea, but a more corrective idea an idea that brings about a, the natural essence of what we are, the, the, our natural nature, the nature of the Son of God, which is to be happy, to be whole. Um, I've told you um, to think how many opportunities you've had to gladden yourself and how many have you refused. So if you think, but hang a second, I've never been told to gladden myself and I've never refused to be happy. Well, the very fact that you're in physical form means that you're choosing wrong mindedness. You're choosing the appearance of body, mind, flesh. And therefore every second of our experience in space time, we're deciding to be in space time as opposed to in the eternity, which is timeless, which is the, the, the kingdom of heaven. This is the same as telling you that you have refused to heal. So there's the word gladdened and here's the word healed. So when you're, when you're not being joyously happy, glad, you are in essence refusing to be or to acknowledge that you, the Holy Son of God, isn't always in, in a permanent state of healing. This is beautiful. The light that belongs to you is the light of joy. The light that belongs to you is, is the light of joy. 
And the word light in a course, if translated directly, means understanding. You know, spiritual people often sign off their letters in love and light. Well, what is light? Light is understanding. And so the light, the understanding that belongs to you is the understanding of joy. And understanding is while we're in right-minded um, dream state. The minute we move into Christ mind, fully awake state, understanding is then transcended into the knowing of, the pure conscious knowing of. So the knowing that belongs to you is the knowing of joy. The understanding that belongs to you is the, the understanding of joy. Radiance is not associated with sorrow. Joy calls forth, and that's, of course, and it'll explain a little further, that joy and love are the same thing. Joy calls forth an integrated willingness to share it and promotes the mind's natural impulses to respond as one. In other words, it's calling the mind to join and as one respond naturally, authentically, knowingly itself. Those who attempt to heal, and this is typical unhealed healer, and you see a lot of this in spiritual communities, especially on the Facebooks and so on, where people are quoting verbatim what they've read or learned and all the different modalities of specialness in spirituality. And they call others to heal or they want to heal others without themselves being healed. And the consequence of trying to heal others because what you're seeing is you're seeing unhealed outside you. Why? The world is a reflection of an internal state of mind. So those who attempt to heal without being wholly joyous themselves call forth different kinds of responses at the same time and thus deprive others of joy, the joy of responding wholeheartedly. So an unhealed healer who is not wholly joyous and wholly happy, or at least, in the very least, you know, is peaceful, is going to elicit all sorts of responses, not only from himself, but from the people projections that he's appearing to try and heal and thus deprive the projections of the joy he is meant to be experiencing himself as himself. And here it states, to be wholehearted, you must be happy. So the word whole and hearted being complete as one, in order to be that, you first need to know that as yourself. And it comes into that circular reference loop where it says, if I'm happy, I see a happy world. But if I look to see a happy world, I'm not going to know myself as happy because it has to start within myself. If fear and love cannot coexist, and if it is impossible to, to be wholly fearful and remain alive, the only possible whole state is a state of love. So to feel whole, and this is alluding to the love and joy is the same, one needs to know that without knowing this within oneself, the joyous knowing of oneself as the joy and love of God, you will never see your, well, first of all, because you're still perceiving and projecting, you're perceiving and then projecting. You won't know the world, your projection as wholly joyous, because you can only know and only see out there in the world what you know and see within yourself. And there is, and here it is, there is no difference between love and joy. No difference between love and joy. So when we use love and joy in a sentence, it's almost like we're repeating the same thing because the three conditions for a miracle mind is love, peace, joy. And yet, if you, if you triangulate it, can you have love without peace? No. Can you have peace without love? No. Can you have love without joy? No. Can you have joy without peace? No. And so love, joy, peace is the trinity of experience in the eternity called now. And that, that experience of love, joy, and peace in the eternity of the present eternal, eternal now is a mind in the state of miracle mindedness, right mindedness, Holy Spirit mind. And Holy Spirit mind is the tiny bridge, the thin bridge that brings you into full knowing, a full knowing of yourself as the love and joy of God, God's, God's dwelling place. 
you don't dwell in heaven. You are the kingdom of heaven. God dwells in you. You, the real you, the real essence of you, which is the self, the heart, and the Christ within. And even within it is wrong because there's no within it. it the, the, the what appears to be without dissolves away in, in the knowing of the self as that which is the kingdom of heaven, that which is the Christ, the Son of God. Therefore, only possible the only possible state is the holy joyous state. There is no other. Everything else is an illusion. So when you're not happy, you're not being real. When you're wholly joyous, without need, without expectation, without any form of projection, then you realize that in this stillness of self, I know myself as the self, which is the self, and is the son of God. To heal or to make joyous is therefore the same as to integrate and make one the, whole, the wholeness of the at one atonement. That is why it makes no difference to what part or by what part of the sonship the healing is offered. Every part benefits. Why? Because it's all you and benefits equally. So what, you have, what appears in the world, the universe, as body minds are projections of the one dreamer. And so when one part of the dreamer awakens, in other words, lightens up, it brings light to all the other minds in darkness. And this is what's happened when the Christ mind or the Jesus becomes the Christ mind and ignites awareness into the mind, therefore igniting minds closest to him in vibrational alliance. And then this is what is appearing in this universe as the awakening. Minds are igniting each other as each separate fractured individual mind in the dream, which is a fracture of the one mind, son of God dreaming. As each individual mind awakens, it brings brighter light more the, in, the intensity of light grows until the darkness of the dream is dispelled in the awareness of light itself For one every part benefits and benefits equally everyone all of us do you are being blessed and this is something to rejoice whether you're aware of it or not and people often want to you know draw attention to the suffering world well no this much the world's never been in a better state of mind. I'll repeat the sentence, and it sounds paradoxical because today we've got access to the internet and YouTube and Twitter and so on, and we read all the horrors of the world, yet the world has never been in a better state because ever since the inception of the creation of this universal creation, which is the falling asleep and the beginning of the sun's awakening, we have never been better off. And if you doubt that, just think of 40, 50, 60 years ago, world wars, 100 years ago, world wars, and think of equality and you know, gender equality and, and discrimination and racism. And all, all these things have, of course, it still exists, but they're being eradicated. And there's a much more just world coming in. And of course, then the darker forces, the fallen asleep, mind then counters this with trying to control the, and dominate the world through whatever wars and you know lockdowns and viruses and vaccines that's the way the the the, the lower mind then counters the the awakening so the, the ego is going to intensify so the ego minds of the world are going to intensify without knowing what they're doing, the control mechanism, because they're losing grip. And so egos feel that, that they can die. And what they'll try and do is because they feel out of control internally, they try and control the world outside them. And that's what you see. And that um, if you just imagine history and just go through the history of the world and you realize we've never been better off. And, and Yared explains it. You are being blessed by every benefits, benefits, through benefits thought of any of your brothers anywhere. So whenever, oh, whenever anyone in this world brings himself into awakened awareness, the atonement, awakened awareness, the atonement, it benefits every single one of us because every single one of us are fractures of the same sun dreaming. And you should want to bless them in return out of gratitude. So gratitude for your brother is a knowing that you have forgiven. The minute you can feel grateful, 
the something that you needed to forgive or, or, or a guilt that you needed to eradicate, how would you be grateful when you understand the benefits for you? In other words, I've now understood my role in this and how I needed the guilt or the fear or the vengeful thought in order to say there must be a better way. And as soon as I understand there must be a better way, I understand the benefit for me in this experience. And that's the gratitude that comes with the benefit that, that dissolves the guilt and the prejudice and the judgment. You need not know them individually. So as you awaken into the light of love, joy, peace, awareness, you're awakening hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions of people, because they're all fractures of yourself. And one of the things you're doing is you're getting rid of the sins of the father, which means the genetic DNA blueprint that gets passed down in our genetics in the illusion from one, one family member to the next. You're, getting, you're clearing this. You're clearing it for your family. You're clearing it for your friends. You're clearing it for your community. You're clearing it for your country. You're clearing it for the world or the illusion there are. You need not know them individually or they you. Just like when Jesus ran this earth, there wasn't a you. And yet the awakening of Jesus who becomes Christ, Christ's mind, is benefiting you today. So the light is so strong that it radiates through the sonship and returns thanks, gratitude to the Father for radiating his joy upon it. Now, this, in, as I've explained before, in this um, PDF version of the text, there's a couple of errors in terms of not capitalizing the word his when it refers to God, so I apologize for that. Only God's holy children are worthy channels of his beautiful joy because they are beautiful enough to hold it by sharing it. And here's the secret. There's another his. Okay. And so they are beautiful enough to hold it by sharing it. And this is what I'm alluding to our purposeful experience once we are atoned, once we are awake, enlightened, meaning the the knowing of our essential nature as the son of God. And so when you start to truly become knowingly that essence, that son of God, essential nature, which is Christ's mind, you start sharing it and, and, and you radiate it. And, and this is why you become channels for the voice for God. It is impossible for a child for, of God to love his neighbor except as himself. And what this means is love your neighbor as yourself because your neighbor is a fractured extension of you, the dreamer, as you are you know, an individualized, limited, fractured off part of the dreamer's mind. But as a, as a water drop, contains the DNA of the entire ocean and the ocean contains the same DNA as the water drop. It's asking you to know yourself as that Holy son of God and to love your neighbor, meaning everybody in the world. And what does it mean to love the agape love means the unconditional acceptance of what is without judgment in Christian terms. They love to say things like love the man, hate the sin. Well, you can't hate the sin because the sin's not real. And loving the man simply means the acceptance of that is what it's meant to be. And yet the very truth of that person is the, es the same essence as myself. We share the one soul, the one self, the same essence. And what I look upon is a reflection of myself. And so when I can look upon the world without any judgment, and I can look upon anyone without any judgment, I realize I am now seeing, experiencing, feeling, sense, sensing the world from a right-minded perspective. And that is why the healer's prayer is, let me know this brother as I know myself. Be thyself knowingly. I'll continue before we take a break, and I will do section two. So text chapter five, healing and wholeness, um, section two, the invitation to the Holy Spirit. This is a, a remarkable section because it really brings in exactly what the world needs right now, not only on an individual healing process experience, but as a globe, as a, as a planet, as, as a collective whole. Um, and just explains it so beautifully. 
Healing is a thought by which two minds perceive their oneness and become glad. And when two minds are joined there, I shall be also. Two minds become glad. This is the holy relationship. So it's Christ addressing you. Christ's mind is awake. And if you perceive yourself one with Christ's mind, um, that becomes glad. You become glad because Christ's mind already is glad. Now, imagine every single being in form in this world is again a misperceived projection of love, misperceived projection of the self, the son of God self, of you, therefore. As we join, as we're joining in this talk, as you join, uh, whether you're live on this talk or watching it on the YouTube channel a day or a week or a month or a year later, we're joining in, in Christ's mind, in love, joy, peace, mind, right-mindedness. This gladness calls to every part of the sonship to rejoice with them and lets God, and let, and lets God go out into them and through them. And it plays a little bit on space-time in and through because there is no in and through in timelessness. It just, it is the very essence of God as you. You are the love of God. You are God's kingdom. Only the healed mind, so the right mind, can experience revelation with lasting effect. And lasting effect, eternity, revelation, what is it revealing? The essential nature of your essence as the essence of God. The very energy, which is God, is, is you. You've just forgotten because revelation is an experience of pure joy. And what is God? Pure joy. If you do not choose to be wholly joyous and you say, but why wouldn't I choose it? Well, you're choosing it while you believe in people outside you. And that while you have any form of judgment, it's not that you're not choosing to be happy. The truth is that you are choosing to be unhappy by the, very, by the mere fact that you judge yourself and others. Judgment means a choice for unhappiness. Non-judgment means a choice for joyousness. So if you do not choose to be wholly joyous, your mind cannot have what it does not choose to be. And so because of free will, God has placed the memory of your essential nature of God in you. And that placing of that memory of God, memory of God, Holy Spirit. The very essence of God is spirit. God is simply energy. And God has projected that energy in the form of a voice, spirit, energy into your mind. What's your mind? The activating agent of the essence of what you are. What do we call the essence of what we call it spirit? So God has placed the memory of your true self, spirit, in your mind. But you need to choose to want it because God won't push it into you, won't force it in you. And because God also realizes as a dreamer, we have a problem with authority. And so he's not going to force it upon you because you're going to resist it and you're going to deny it. Remember that spirit knows no difference between having and being. This is a vitally important sentence because be knowingly means to have knowingly that you are the love of God, that you are the kingdom of God. And therefore, what is it that you could possibly want when you are being everything? And what is everything? Well, everything that is true. And what is true? Joy, peace, love in our understanding. And what is the world of people, places, things, and events? Misperceived, misprojected love. And so we then try and acquire these misperceived, projected aspects of love, people, places, things, and events, in the hope that we will become happy, not realizing we are the happiness itself, misperceiving, misprojecting, and then thinking it's outside us. It's, it is, you are happiness itself, the very essence of you, your essential nature is pure joy, pure awareness of pure joy. So the higher mind, right-minded, so higher mind is right mind, thinks it's still perceiving according to the, the law, the law spirit obeys, and therefore honors only the laws of God. And what is the laws of God? Well, you know, I've made a list of them. There's 10. But in essence, one means what one has, they all have because there's only one son. And what's given to one is given to all because it's the dreamer giving to himself 
in what appears to be people giving to people. But it's again, just one. To spirit, getting is meaningless and giving is all. Why? Because to get means you don't have. What you don't have means you're, you're, you're suffering from. And yet to spirit means I have everything. And so, you know, when the church says give everything to the poor, what it's actually saying give everything is not physical. Give everything which is true, which is unconditional love. Have everything. Okay. Having everything, spirit holds everything by giving it, which is, of course, foreign to the ego. And thus creates as the father created. What is creation? Extension. How do we know this? Well, you are the extension of God. And so extending means creating means sharing all of yourself eternally forever because God is forever eternally expanding as the love of God. So it's a, you have to start to understand this and you need to start bringing it in and comprehending it from a knowingness. You have to know if you really want to be happy and free of suffering and of separation and all the challenges that you have in the world, and you're stuck in memories and happy memories, horrible memories, past relationships. If you want to get rid of suffering, if you want to get rid of fear, you need to abide in the very essence of love, which is the temple, the heart, the kingdom. And if God resides in heaven, the kingdom of heaven, and God resides in your heart, well, then your heart must be the kingdom of heaven. It's not like the kingdom and your heart. It's God resides in the kingdom. God resides in your heart. Your heart is the kingdom of God. And what is your heart? The heart is the center of the mind. What is the mind? The misperception of self then projected into the physical world. So what am I? What am I really? I am the essence, which is the extension of God. And the extension of God is the sonship. I am the extension, sonship, holy self, holy spirit of God. Dreaming I'm not. And you have to at least be willing to accept the reasoning that I've just explained for it to become reasonable for you to accept it and the acceptance thereof to grow and extend and expand. And that extension expanding is the healing. While this kind of thinking is totally alien, to having things for the ego, even to the lower mind, it is quite comprehensible in connection with ideas. So think about it this way. What is it that we can share that is shared without losing? If you share a physical possession, you divide its ownership. And just think of chocolate, okay? Break it in half, well, you're only gonna have half the chocolate. However, if you share an idea, you don't lessen it. And it stays in you and it grows in somewhere else. In actual fact, it grows. It doesn't make it real or true. In other words, the idea doesn't have to be true or real, but if you share it, it grows. And a typical example of that, as you find in religious circles, people find Jesus, objectification thereof, give their lives to Jesus, and then want to tell everybody. Why? By sharing ideas, they strengthen it in themselves. And the more they strengthen, the bigger their congregations grow, the more powerful they believe they become even though the idea of an objectified deity called Jesus is incorrect because it's not out there. Jesus, the man died 2000 years ago. What remains the essence of what was Jesus fully awakened essence. And what is that fully awakened essence, which was Jesus 2000 years ago, the Christ mind. And where is the Christ mind in the exact same place. It's always been in God dreaming. And where is it in you? It is the dreaming aspect of you. That's awake. Now, if you start to accept this idea, it grows. And that's why Jesus came. He came to demonstrate my father and I are one. He came to demonstrate that you cannot be separated from the essential nature of yourself, which is the essential nature of our source, extending outwards continuously in eternity as itself. All of this is still yours, even though it has been given away. Given away how? Given away in understanding. Further, if the one to whom you give it accepts it as his, he reinforces it in your mind and thus increases it, whether it's correct or, 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 or incorrect. If you can accept the concept that the world, 
and this is what he's alluding to, is one of ideas, while well, the entire universe is a dream. And what is in a dream? It's idea. When you dream at night, your imagination's great. Imagination and ideas, one and the same thing. The whole belief in the false association the ego makes between giving and losing is gone. Why? Because it's the belief that what you give extends and grows as opposed to what you give, you lessen in yourself. It's completely rever thought reversal to ego thinking. Let us start our process of reawakening with just a few simple concepts. Giving us a process here and the process again, it's imparting an idea on you. Thoughts increase by being given away. The more who believe in them, the stronger they become. Everything is an idea. Everything you see, feel, touch, see is an idea. How then can giving and losing be associated? Well, it's associated because the ego does not want you to give and share truth equally among self and all. And so, Holy Spirit says, this is the invitation to the Holy Spirit. In other words, Holy Spirit, memory of God. So when I, when you remember, every time I say Holy Spirit, I want you to make that conscious decision. Lewis says, Holy Spirit, memory. Lewis says, Holy Spirit, memory. I have already, I have said already that I can reach up and bring the Holy Spirit down to you. Now, there's no up and down. This is symbolic because it's all within. It's always here now. But I can bring him to you only at your own invitation. So if you're not inviting it in, Holy Spirit's invitation, it cannot enter because of your free will. The Holy Spirit, and this is vital. This is so important, especially if you, get, you come into a course from whatever religion you come in, trapped in a dual mindset, you and your deity, you and God, you and Buddha, you and Krishna, you and Allah, whatever the case may be, you know, Ataman, whatever. It's not outside you, okay? And so in Course in Miracles, bring it all within. The Holy Spirit, the memory of God is in your right mind, okay? The part of your mind which hasn't forgotten its source. Why? So the memory of God is in your mind, which is awake, right mind. Still perceiving, but it's right perceiving because it's perceiving under the authority, the guardianship of the memory of God, Holy Spirit, as he was in mine. The Bible says, this is vital because it's so misunderstood in the Bible, may the mind be in you that was also in Christ, right-mindedness. So that the mind in Christ and Jesus, right-mindedness, Christ-mindedness, miracle-mindedness, Holy Spirit mind, and uses this as a blessing. It is the blessing of miracle-mindedness. So right mind, okay, Christ mind, right mind, Holy Spirit mind is one and the same. Don't become confused by these different terms because they're all bringing you into the knowing of yourself as the son of God. Simply dreaming that you're not. It asks that you may think, and this is the whole purpose of Jesus' existence as a man on this world, was to demonstrate its possibility, because had you never seen it before, you wouldn't have imagined it was possible. Again, imagine it was possible. So he came as an idea in form to plant an idea in other forms, your minds, that you may believe the idea that it's possible and in the belief it becomes possible because what you believe becomes true for you. It asks that you may think as I thought, joining me in Christ-minded thinking, okay? So, and this is the whole purpose of this course is to join with the awake mind of the dreamer, our, the part of our mind that is dreaming that part of our mind called the Christ mind, that part of our mind which is under the guardian, the guardianship, the guiding light of the Holy Spirit. And here it explains the Holy Spirit quite cleverly in ways that most people have never heard before and yet so absolutely beautiful. 
the Holy Spirit is the only part of the Holy Trinity that has a symbolic function. In actual fact, its pure function is symbolic because once the atonement has occurred, completed itself, there is no more need for Holy Spirit because the very essence of God is Holy Spirit. He is referred to as the healer, the comforter, and the guide. Okay, and think of again, Holy Spirit is the memory. And so it's the memory of God in you, reminding you that you are the Holy Son, which heals. The memory heals. There's no energy in so quantum and all of these magical beliefs and external healing processes and chanting and whatever. Healing is simply the realization, I am. And if it permeates, that, that full realization permeates through the essence and then through the appearance, the perception of body-mind. And you allow that pure, holy instant to flow through you and flow through all your projections. The physical body projection heals instantly with the holy mind, but your willingness to accept it has to come first. It can't be done for you. And if it's done externally, let's say Jesus appeared and did the healing for you, would you retain it if you didn't hold that new idea, image of yourself as God's holy son? Would the healing remain? Question. I don't think so. He is also described as something separate, apart from the Father and from the Son. So it's the Trinity, which is one, but separate there because you have to have three to become one. How does, what is, what is it trying to explain? I myself said, if I go, I will send you another comforter and he will abide with you, abide in you, abide as you. His symbolic function makes the Holy Spirit difficult to understand because symbolism is open to different interpretations. So watch out for that word. What it really means is as a man and also one of God's creations, just like you as a man, and also one of God's creations, my right-minded thinking, my right thinking, which came from the Holy Spirit, the memory of God, or the universal inspiration, which is a beautiful way to explain Holy Spirit, universal inspiration, taught me first and for foremost that this inspiration is for all, the inspiration in spiritation that I am. So the Holy Spirit, is pure inspiration. And it's a universal inspiration for the collective mind, which is the collective mind is one mind dreaming as all of these fractured cells. So Holy Spirit, universal inspiration, inspiration is the same thing. And therefore, what is it alluding to? You are the inspiration of yourself. Inspire thyself. Know thyself. Be thyself. Knowingly. I could not have it myself without knowing this. The word to know is proper in this context. Know thyself, be thyself knowingly, because the Holy Spirit is so close to knowledge that he calls forth, calls it forth, or better allows it to come, come through into the whole mind. Therefore, when you reside in right mindedness, what happens to wrong mind? It doesn't get destroyed, it never existed, it just dissolves. It was never there. Because the right mind fills in the mind completely because it appears that half the mind's in darkness or split. But it cannot be split because there's only one. And so what appears to be split off is a dreaming part of the mind. Okay. I have spoken before of the higher or true perception, which is so near to truth that God himself can flow across this little gap. And that's the purpose of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, God cannot know that this dream the contents of this dream, God only knows his holy, his holy son is dreaming. And so God's spirit, his voice into the dream intercedes. It understands the illusion. It understands the right mind, the heaven, the right mind. And so it dissolves illusion and brings heaven into our awareness. Knowledge is always ready to flow everywhere. Why? Because there's not everywhere. There's always only now here as the kingdom of heaven. But it cannot oppose the mind that is dreaming and believing in separation, people, places, things, and events. Therefore, the Holy Spirit, you know, therefore you can obstruct it, although you can never lose it. And how do you obstruct it? You obstruct it with your filters. And what are your filters? Your beliefs, ideologies, judgments, prejudices, 
and the not knowing, the not remembering of yourself truly as the Christ, as the Holy Son of God. The Holy Spirit, and here it is, been saying it for a couple of years now, and, and I know that Course Miracle students get very angry with me when I say this, and yet here it is. The Holy Spirit is the Christ mind. Let's pause there for a second. I want you to sit with this. The Holy Spirit is the Christ mind. So if we think of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, you're saying, hang a second, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God, you know. But now these two are the same. Well, if these two are the same, those two must be the same. If those two must be the same, well, then there's only one. The Trinity is one. The Holy Spirit is the Christ mind. He has the word aware, awareness, and he has the word knowledge. So important that this starts to filter into you, Course in Miracles students and teachers for God. Awareness is knowledge. The understanding of yourself as the awareness which is aware. The knowing of yourself, the knowledge of yourself as the Holy Son of God needs to first be perceived before it is known because the perception idea is what allows your willingness to go there if you don't fear it. You've often heard me say this. If the light was upon, to the, the Christ light was about to descend upon you and this is your final decision and it says, the minute the light becomes you, you join with the Christ mind. There will be no memory you've ever existed. There'll be no memory of this life, past lives, your family members, your spouse, your dog, your cat, any animals of the world of the universe. You simply return to the joyous light, which is God, with no idea and no memory of ever having existed in form. Would you go? Would you ask it? Would you invite it in? And if your answer is no, you're not ready. Keep incarnating a few more times, you eventually will. But if you go absolutely let it all go without a single thought of fixing something, changing something, missing someone that's dead and in heaven, because there is no dead and in heaven, alive is the self that is the kingdom of heaven. And anyone that died that you're missing, you miss the point because they're not dead. It's just a continuation of you, the dreamer, fracturing yourself into billions of little beings, which you've labeled and named as people, places, things and events, as spouses, as parents, as mothers, as children, as dogs and cats. None of it. It's all you. So until you're ready, ready to let go of the idea of all of you, you, bad English, but all of yous, of all your little mini-me's, your little enemies, your mini-me's attacking you, let it all go, bosses and spouses and friends and lovers, and all of them in one, let it all go, realizing I'm dreaming. And so if I wake up, I forget the dream, never existed, no universe. No Hubble telescope, it's not needed. Because what's it trying to inquire? It's trying to go into the deepest, darkest recesses of the mind in order to understand itself through the externalization of what it's not. Why? Be here now. Know the essential nature of you. You'll know the essential nature of your brother. And therefore, you'll know the same, the essence in you is the essence of your brother. And therefore, one essence, Christ mind, wake up. The Holy Spirit is the Christ mind, is you which is aware of the knowledge that lies beyond perception. You go, but oh, I don't know, Lewis. Do I need to check in the Akashic records? There's no Akashic record. It's nonsense. It's spiritual mumbo jumbo. It's misperceptions of what's recording the ego. Akashic records is no more than the ego recording the ego. Forget about the spirit world. It's as illusionary as this world. Go within or go without. Go within, be silent, and know I am. The Holy Spirit is the Christ mind, which is aware, awareness itself of the knowledge, the knowing that lies beyond perception. And, and what lies beyond perception? The knowing of oneself as the Holy Son of God. Accept this, and you start to completely dissolve the idea that you've ever been informed, that you can ever suffer, that anyone ever did anything wrong to you, that you had a youth or an upbringing which programmed you and hurt you and people separated and betrayed you and hurt you and 
mother this and father that and boyfriend and lover and husband and daughter and let it all go. Let it all go. Why are you still trapped in your fond memories? What memory? What memory is there then of the self? He came into being with the separation as a protection, inspiring the atonement principle at the same time. So Holy Spirit was not needed because the very essence of you is God's Holy Spirit. God is a spirit, as the Bible says, and those who worship him should worship him, know him. Worship, know, is to know. To worship is to know him as spirit. Before that, there was no need for healing, for no one was comfortless because what appears as billions of people is actually one son in God, part of the sonship. The sonship is billions of cells of light in God, and it's a single cell, one son fell asleep, dreamt of the universe. If all of the sonship had, had fallen asleep and dreamt of universes, then you can understand the concept, I love this, you know, of, of parallel universes. Well, there's no such thing as parallel universes because there's one dream. And what appears to be parallel universes are 8 billion dreamers dreaming at parallel, in parallel. There are no 8 billion universes. And we can't even figure out this one. Now we imagine there's eight, you know, or 10 or whatever. Of course, it's going to have some sacred numbers, the 72 sacred universes. There's none of that nonsense. Forget about all that magic and all that spiritual mumbo jumbo nonsense. One son of God dreaming up one universe, which is big enough and seems limitless, but it's not. The, the universe itself is limited because it comes to a space and time where there is no space and time and it all collapses on itself because eternity is always here now. And the universe came into existence and it can be mapped 16.4 billion years ago. So what was before the big bang? Because the big bang is really the sun falls asleep. The Holy spirit enters the mind. The light enters the dreamer's mind. He focuses on the light. Boom, big bang. Universe comes into existence. The universe, the dream of the son of God dreaming. And what existed before the universe, what exists in eternity, God. And God is pure light, pure understanding. And that's why the universe is mostly darkness interspersed with little pieces of light called stars and planets and solar systems. That is an outer representation of an inner state of mind. The universe made up of cells and planets and stars and nebula, no different to the brain, the neurocortex and the firing synapses of the brain, as above, so below, is demonstrating to the dreamer, you're dreaming, wake up. The voice of the Holy Spirit, wake up. Dinner's ready. Mom's calling, dad's calling, home's calling. Is the, call, is the call to atonement. I love to split this word, at. At one. Mint, to join with your fractured selves and remember yourself as the Holy Son of God which is the restoration of the integrity of the mind. True integrity means no flexing, truth only in the knowing of the self. When the atonement is complete, the whole sonship is healed. Uh, is healed. There will be no call to return. Why? Because you're home. So the sonship in this context is the fractured selves. So the fractured selves in this context of our world universe made is fractured selves, sonship. In God, we are but one of the sonship. But what God creates is eternal. So what appears as universe cannot because the universe has a lifespan. It can be measured in time. It's not real. The Holy Spirit will remain with God's sons to bless their creations and keep him in the light of joy. And there's a bit of a play here. What are their creations? Well, not the world you've made. Your truest creation is the extending of you as the love of God, extending it and loving all of yourselves. Love your creation. Don't avoid it. Don't deny it. Don't run away from it. Don't attack it. Don't blame it. Don't have any remorse over it. Don't have any guilt over it. Forgive because it's all you and whatever came into your life to create turmoil, to hurt you, to bruise you in your formative years and your early 15s, teenage years and your 20s and your 30s came to bruise you as a gift from the Holy Spirit, your highest part of your mind, 
to awaken you into the realization that if you hadn't got to a point where you eventually screamed at the, at the heavens and said, there must be a better way, you wouldn't find you out of the dream because you would be stuck in your so-called paradise, paradisical dream, thinking that this was real and be trapped in it forever. Be glad for all the challenges you've had, all the hurts you've had. Had you not had them, you wouldn't have searched for a better way out of there. And this is what's amazing when you think, well, but this is so beautiful. Why? I want to get out of here. Well, God honored even the miscreations of his children because they had made them. So if you wonder why God allows the universe to exist if it's part of the dreamer's mind, it's a miscreation because God had made them and made his children. And if, because it's like a child plays with clay, you know, clay and whatever, paper mache or Lego, and he makes a disaster. The child loved, the parent loves it anyway because the child made it. And um, just think of parents, how they love their children, no matter what the child makes. Think of parents, grandparents, how you love your grandchildren, no matter what they make, no matter how disastrous it is, even if they painted lipstick on the dog and painted him with crayons and whatever the case is, you love it anyway. I know you know it's like, okay, going to have to wash the dog for the next six years, but you love it anyway because it's your child. Unless you're a psychotic parent stuck with ego problems and, 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 you project all your negativity on them, which of course then you, that you're that child, chose that parent in order to have that negativity so that you could then find a way out of it. So never blame your parents because you chose them with their, with their ego quirks in order so that you could learn to let all of that stuff go. Whatever your parents challenged you with are your forgiveness lessons can you've set them up and repeated them for the rest of your life. So time to let that go. God also blessed his children with a way of thinking that that could raise their perceptions so high they could almost reach back to him, capital H there, okay? So their perceptions, right-mindedness. So God placed in us an awake part. So as we fell asleep, voice of God into the dream, Holy Spirit into the dream instantly, and the right mind remains, waiting patiently for us to give up on our illusions, the prodigal son. He finally gives up, he turns inwards, and he says, Father, take me back. I'll even work and your pigsties, if needed, I'll be your servant. The Holy Spirit is the mind of the atonement, the at one mind. He represents a state of mind close enough to one mindedness, Christ mind, one mindedness, Holy Son of God, Christ mind, that transfer to it, that transfer to it as, as uh, to it at last possible makes it. Let me repeat that sentence. Sorry. He represents a state of mind close enough to one mindedness that transfers to it is at last possible. So it makes it in our understanding not only possible, but probable that we can awaken in this lifetime here now. And it's not some far off concept because the distance between you and God is a thought away. And a thought is thinner than a grain of sand or a, a, hair, a hair particle. A thought is simply right there. So your return to Christ's mind and the joining with the Holy Son of God as yourself and the abiding in God is simply a thought away. Think about it. Think of God and you return. Think of Christ as yourself. Return to that knowing. And yeah, we talk about something very different. Perception is not knowledge. And what we call knowledge in the world, no matter how much you understand the science and the whatever, quantum physics, quantum thermodynamics, a subject I studied in depth, no matter how much you understand the formulations of atoms and particles, no matter how much you understand whatever you think you understand in terms of science, it is not true. It's not knowledge. Knowledge of a universe, knowledge of the will point because everything becomes an echo for the voice of God, mathematics, science, quantum, music, Solgafredo, sacred geometries, everything's pointing you inwards through the realization of yourself. But it's still not knowledge, true knowledge. And the only knowledge that you can have while you reside in what appears to be a physical universe is the knowledge of oneself, one's essential nature, and the word for that is 
silence. Total is no word for God or therefore the essence of God or the essence of the sun. But you come very close to it and especially in the knowing of it in silent abidance, stillness and silence. Silence is the essence of truth. Truth's essence, silence. Stillness is the essence of the self. In stillness and silence, you become the essence of yourself knowingly. And hence the teaching, be still and know I am. And this is our little word. Be still and know I am is God. Or from our highest understanding, be still and know I am is being knowingly the son of God. Perception is not knowledge, but it can be transferred to knowledge or crossed over into it from wrong-minded to right-minded. It might even be more helpful yet to use the literal meaning of transfer or carried over since the last step is, is taken by God. So you move into right-mindedness, in other words, Christ mind, and then the dream collapses and you awaken in God as the Holy Sonship. The Holy Spirit, the shared inspiration of all the Sonship, induces a kind of perception, preception, preconception, in which many elements are like those in the kingdom of heaven itself. So some key words, the Holy Spirit, shared inspiration, the sonship, the inducing of a perception in which many elements are like those in the kingdom of heaven itself. So induces a kind of preception, understanding, pre-understanding, and starting to get it. Many of the elements, the essences, are like those in the kingdom of heaven. Let's read that sentence again. It's so important. The Holy Spirit, the shared inspiration of all the sonship, complete sonship, shares in this inspiration, induces a kind of preception. Let's play with the word. Preception. Preconception. In which many of the elements are like those in the kingdom of heaven itself. First, its universality is perfectly clear, and no one who attains it could believe for one instant that sharing it involves anything but gain. Firstly, its universality is perfectly clear, the knowing, and no one who attains it could believe for one instant that sharing it involves anything but gain. So if you ever wonder why do I do this every Wednesday? Sharing it is knowing it, and the more I share it, the more I gain, and the more immerse, the more I immerse into this essential knowing of myself, the greater the joy I am extends and expands within me and all of my creations, and every, meaning everything I see, touch, feel, do. Second, it is, inis, it is incapable of attack and therefore truly open. This means that although it does not in, engender knowledge, it does not obstruct it in any way. So it doesn't force it upon you, okay? nor can it be taken from you. And finally, it points the way beyond the healing that brings and leads the mind, wrong and right mind, it, its own integration towards the powers of creation. So right and wrong mind, wrong mind collapses and the whole thing is filled with right-mindedness, Christ mind, Christ mind. Okay, so it's the integration towards the path of creation. It's the realization of what creation is and what making is not. So no more making. It's the continuous extension, expansion, the eternity of extension, ext expansion, which is creation. And what do we extend and expand? The only thing that is true. And what is that? Love. What is love? All of it, everything, nothing except love. And so everything you see in the world is love, just misperceived and misprojected. It is at this point that sufficient quantitative 
change occurs to produce real qualitative shifts. So the quantity of the experiences grows and the quality of you shifts into a lighter, more joyous, more happy, more rested, more healed being. It's phenomenal. In text chapter 5, uh, section 3, uh, the voice for God. Voice, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, memory. So the memory of God that resides where? In the self, in the Holy Son, in the right mind, as the right mind. And now it brings us into another look at what healing really is and how the voice for God facilitates the remembering of the self and the remembering of the self is the miracle is the healing it's a spontaneous occurrence that happens at a certain level when the idea of a separate self of separate bodies collapses in the light of awareness and there's a spontaneous knowing and that is the holy instant that is the miracle principle, that is the atonement principle, that is the remembering of the self as the extension and love of God. Healing is not creating, it is reparation. So what is creating? The extension of love. And so healing is not the extending, it's still the cleaning of the filter of the wrong mind. And so it's the repairing of the mind but what is it repaired? Repairs the wrong mind. It gets rid of the wrong mind. It dissolves as the right mind fills the mind, as the mind becomes right mind, miracle mind. A miracle minded individual in this world is purely right minded. It sees no separation. It sees no, it has no judgment. It has no you, me. It sees all of it as itself. The Holy Spirit promotes healing by looking beyond. It to what the children of God were before healing was needed and will be when they have been healed. So it looks beyond, beyond to what the children of God were before healing. So what were we? We were holy. We were the Holy Son of God. This alteration of time, of the time sequence, should be quite familiar. Holy instant, where time stands still in the instant knowing because it is very familiar, or sorry, very similar to the shift in the perception of time that the miracle induces. So the miracle collapses time into the knowing of the eternity, the eternal now, as your immortal reality. The Holy Spirit is the motivation, the inspiration for miracle-mindedness. Why? Because the abidance in that miracle-mindedness is so, that's the word, beautiful, joyous, peaceful, there's no word for it, that you want to stay there. The decision to heal the separation by letting it go, letting go of the idea of the separation. Your will is still in you because God placed it in your mind. So you have the will to miscreate or perceive correctly. And although you can keep it asleep, in other words, forgetting it, you cannot get rid of it because it is you. Getting rid of it would mean you dis disappear as the son of God, and that's not possible. There's another capitalization error. God himself keeps your will alive by transmitting it from his mind to yours as long as there is time. Another H there that should be capitalized. So time, in other words, as while there's time, you're dreaming. When there's no time, eternity, you're awake. The miracle itself is a reflection of this union of will between father and son, between you and God. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of joy. Now try and be miserable when you're living in the total awareness that you are joy. It's impossible. And the other way, try and be happy when you're trapped in judgment, guilt, fear, sin. It's impossible. Okay. The Holy Spirit, he is the call to return with which God blesses the minds of his separated sons, the fractured self, there's a capital H, again, of his fractured sons. In other words, separated, they believe, each individual believes there's a son, but it's only one son dreaming. 
This is the vocation of the mind. The mind had no calling until the separation. Why? Because it was one with God. It was the kingdom of God. Because before that, it had only, only being. So the very essence of what you are is being, spirit, being a spirit. And you would not have understood the call to right thinking because in the mind of God and of the sonship, there is no thinking. There's just being. The Holy Spirit is God's, so the memory, the memory of God is God's answer to the separation. Why? The separation is the belief that you're asleep, dreaming. The Holy Spirit is the memory of God reminding you that you have never left. And the means by which the atonement, the joining, heals the knowing of ourself as one until the whole mind returns to what it always does as a Holy Son of God, creating. Creating is extension, extension of what? Of the joyous love we are as the son of God. The principle of the atonement and separation began at the exact same time. As soon as the son fell asleep, God spoke into his voice. And actually the son awoke. Why does it appear that we're still dreaming? Because we have not eradicated guilt for the dream we've had. And therefore it still appears real. So just like you at night, you have a dream. And in your dream, you went to a, to a pet shop and you murdered all the puppies and you wake up in the morning now awake and you feel so guilty for this dream and you keep replaying the dream in your mind over and over and over again and this is what we're doing we're playing the same story over and over and over again except the ego changes the characters every time we rethink it so it appears that we're different people in different lifetimes and and different aspects of ourselves and yet, why? It's because we haven't eradicated the idea, the erroneous egoic idea of sin, fear, guilt. And so the minute we get rid of the idea that there could be sin, fear, guilt, because it was just a dream, it never really happened. Don't even try and understand why you dreamt it, because there's no reason for it other than the idea of sin, fear, guilt came into your dream. When you're able to let it go, it dissolves in the light of your new capital S self-found awareness. When the ego was made, popped in as a crazy mad idea, God placed the mind, in the mind, the call to joy. Call to joy, Holy Spirit. This call is so strong that the ego always dissolves, not destroyed, because you can't destroy an illusion. It just dissolves. It's like a shadow dissolves as soon as you bring a light into it. Okay, So the ego always dissolves at the sound, at its sound. That is why you must choose to hear one of two voices within you, two minds, split mind, right and wrong mindedness. One you made yourself, the wrong mind, and that one is not of God. So the mind that made the universe is not the mind of God. The mind that made the universe is your wrong minded, where you projected yourself in order to try and understand and realize what you were because you, you forgot what you were and you were unhappy in your forgetfulness. Everything we're doing is the return to happiness, and happiness is the knowing of oneself, the abiding in the essence of oneself. But the other part of the mind is given you by God because it is you who asks you only to listen to. Okay, right mind of perception is a thought away from the miracle Christ mind, which is the mind of God. The Holy Spirit in, is in you in the very literal sense, meaning, and people love to say, literally, okay, meaning the Holy Spirit is you in a very literal, literal sense. His is the voice that calls you back to where you were before and will be again. It is possible even in this world to only hear one voice and, and no other. Why? Why is it possible? Because Christ did it. Jesus did it. Becomes Christ, demonstrating it is possible. Believe it. Want to believe it. It takes effort and great willingness to learn. Think of all the effort and willingness it takes to keep this dream, this, this horrific dream alive, and how much effort we, we place and people place as things and events and the acquisition thereof, and the effort and the working. Why abide as the self? It is a final obstacle to peace, is, as we know, special love relationships, me and you against the world, the needing, the pursuing, the, the triggers that other people trigger in us, of, you know, between all the people that we have made to reflect ourselves because we're fighting with ourselves. We're arguing with ourselves. 
in believing that, hang a second, you know, if I awaken to this, I die, I dissolve, I forget what I am, and then what happens to me? And no, I'm going to hang on to it. I'm going to usurp God's power and prove that God's power has no power over me. It is the final lesson that I learned. And God's sons are, are as equal as learners as they are as sons. So we're equal. So if Christ Jesus did it, then you too can and will. It's just a matter of illusionary time. It's your willingness to let it go means your willingness to remember. The more you're willing to remember, seek ye first the kingdom and all else shall be given. And if you are the kingdom, seek ye first yourself. Because you are, you've heard me say this, and I know so many people argue, and I say, just look, read your course properly. This is, this is it. If you fully understand this next line, you can put this book away, stop dialing in on Wednesdays, go be happy, you know, and, and, and just be blessedly, joyously happy for the rest of your life. Son of God, you are the kingdom of heaven. Let that sink in. God abides in the kingdom. God abides in your heart. Your heart is the kingdom. The rest of you is an illusion. The heart is the mind awake, the Christ mind, the Holy Son of God mind. The rest is illusion. What remains, that is true. The heart, symbolically. The essence of self. Heart is the awake part of mind. You are mind within mind mind which is the kingdom of heaven holy son of god you are the kingdom of heaven celebrate this and to all of those that get so trapped in the spiritual mumbo jumbo there's a war going on in the heavens between good and evil between the demons oh dante's inferno between demons and angels between god and the devil nonsense there's no such thing Darkness doesn't exist. Quantum proves it. You can measure a particle of light. You can measure its density, its intensity, its dimension, its frequency, its movement. Find me a particle of darkness. Look at the dark sky. Try and touch it. Go closer. It's still not there. Go closer. Go into the go. Go with the Hubble telescope. It still can't touch the darkness. It always just appears. Where is it? It's in your wrong mind. It's a misperception of yourself. The world you look upon, every object you see, people, places, things, and events, every planet, every star, every mountain is you misperceived as you. All of it is you. Don't say the world's an illusion. It's a misperceived illusion. Misperceived, misprojected. Everything you look upon is yourself projected through filters. Filters of ideas, ideologies, judgments. The essence of you is pure light, pure understanding, pure knowing, pure love, pure joy. And even those words don't explain it enough. It's words, but symbols twice removed. You are the kingdom of heaven. Belief is not true because the word lie exists in there. But you have let the belief, the lie in darkness enter your mind. And so now you need a new light. You don't actually need a new light. Just playing with you here. Christ loves to play with us in words and symbologies. You are the light. You need to see yourself in you. The Holy Spirit is the radiance that you must banish. Let banish the idea of darkness. The idea of darkness. And man, people come onto my Facebook profile where I post this. They go, but darkness exists. We need to love the darkness to know the light nonsense there's no darkness to know darkness is the spell in the abiding of light when you know yourself is not light then understanding the knowing of god where's the darkness there's no darkness there's no evil nothing evil what appears as evil in this world is misprojected the densest misprojections of self love them in order for them to dispel the darkness think of everybody right now that bugs you, pisses you off, makes you angry. Love them. What does that mean? Accept them exactly as they are because the acceptance of them transcends the trigger and awakens you to knowing yourself and your brother as one, especially your enemies, your many knees, 
enemies are many knees. It's all of you. His is the glory before which dissociation falls away. You dissociate from your brothers, yourself, your creation, the world, love it. And the kingdom of heaven breaks through into its own as you, because you are the kingdom of heaven. Before the separation, before separation, before you fell asleep, you didn't need guidance. Why? You were the kingdom itself. You were the radiance, the glory of God. You knew as you will know again, but you do not know now. And if you think you do, well, you don't because you're listening to me. And I'm still trying to figure it out. Well, so what? Somewhat, you know, the part of me gets it. the happy part of me, the quiet part of me. God does not guide because he can share only perfect knowledge, capital H. Okay. Guidance is evaluative because it implies there's a right way and also a wrong way, one to be chosen and the other to be avoided, both by ego and right mind. By choosing one, you give up the other. And man, the ego wants you to give up this spiritual mumbo jumbo propeller hit nonsense, right? The choices for the Holy Spirit is the choice for God because it's the memory for God. So the choice to remember God, Holy Spirit, is the choice for God. God is not in you in a literal sense. Okay, so it's not like God is in my heart. You are part of Him. Okay, Him again capitalized because you are the kingdom. There's not God and you. It's you in God as the kingdom. Just forgotten, just dreaming. When you choose to leave, when you choose to dream, you left him. He gave you a voice to speak for him because he could no longer share his knowledge with you without a hindrance. Why? Because you created another voice to interrupt the direct communication. Direct communication was broken because you had made another voice. So when you choose to leave, in other words, in your dreams, he said, don't worry. I'll leave the light in you. And eventually you'll give up on this externalization of yourself and you'll turn inwards and you'll remember me because nothing you've ever made has made you permanently happy. Nothing. Not even the rugrats you've had. Oh, I'm so in love. I want to have a child. That little shit drives you mad when it's 16 and 18 and 25. Not even that until you turn inwards. So you'll see the very, very enlightened gurus and don't have children. Have cats, but no children. Maybe motorcycles, but no children. Okay. The Holy Spirit calls you both to remember and forget. Oh, what's going on here? Both to remember. This is you. How can I both remember and forget? Well, only in paradox, only in illusion, can you remember and forget? And do both actually benefit you? Because to remember is to forget, and to forgive is to forget. So to forgive is to remember. To forgive is to be knowingly yourself, because what are you forgiving? Forgiveness is the last illusionary construct that gets rid of the rest of illusion. Forgiveness means I choose to remember. So what does it mean to forgive? It means I see you, my brother, as an aspect of myself I made in order to know myself. So before I attack you, mother, father, boyfriend, lover, husband, wife, dog, boss, whatever, traffic, before I attack you, I realized I created you in order to incite me in anger that I would get so desperate that I have no choice because it just keeps repeating itself and I would look for another way. You have chosen to be in a state of opposition. You, you, not me, all of us as you, in a state of opposition in which opposites are possible because in heaven, all is like itself and therefore there's no opposite. As a result, there are choices you must make. And the choices, this is who the course is talking to you. You, the decision maker. Because if it's talking to you in the wrong mind, first of all, you wouldn't have picked up the course. So you're tipping into the decision maker. It's now asking you, let this idea go, awaken to the self, right-mindedness. In a holy state, the will is free, your will. So that its creative power is unlimited and choice is meaningless. Why? Because there is only one choice. And if there's only one choice, there's no choice. You can have it in any other color as long as it's black, said Mr. Ford. No choice. It's only light. Okay. Because your creative power is unlimited. And creative power, the extension power. Extension of what? 
the extension of love. So you want to heal, heal those around you. How? Through forgiving and realizing, thank you for coming into my life, giving me a hell of a time so that I would get so desperate, look for another way. And now realize you are all me. And I forgive you as I forgive myself, because now I choose to remember the joyous love that I am. God's kingdom is the I am. Freedom to choose is the same power as freedom to create. The same power as freedom to create. But its application is different. Choosing depends on a split mind, meaning that I'm still asleep, still dreaming, still believe the world is real, still believe the rainforests need to be saved. Okay. But I want to know Jesus in heaven and uh, be in love with Jesus. Right mind means there's no Jesus. You are the Christ, the son who fell asleep and manifested billions of beings. One of them was Jesus. And that so-called one from that limited being realized its unlimitlessness or unlimitedness and woke up to itself realizing it dreamt and therefore transcended space-time, resurrected, ascended into the dreamer's awake mind and said, I share this with all of you. And we weren't exactly listening, not over the last 2,000 years. So he found a crazy old lady called Ellen Schuchman, who had done enough work in non-judgment other than in a relationship with Bill, and said, okay, you're the right voice, because you really asked without imagining, because Helen didn't imagine God, what it must be like. But you have no idea, and therefore I'm going to take an idealist mind, a concept, no concept of God, and I'll filter through you and bring forth something called the Course in Miracles. The Holy Spirit is one way of choosing. God did not leave his children comfortless. Even though they chose to leave him. Well, chose, we never leave God because you can't the minute you would, if you can be separated from that, which is everything, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, omnificent, you let, there would be no you. So you just, you think you've left him. The voice they put in their minds was not the voice for his will, for which the Holy Spirit speaks. In other words, the memory speaks. The memory reminds you if you're willing to go there. The voice of the Holy Spirit does not command because it is incapable of arrogance. Only the arrogant command. Sometimes when you're trying to do the good thing and you're pretending to be a CEO, you have to give instructions as a benevolent dictator who knows a better way for his people and has to force them to forgive in order for them to finally see the light. But that's the story I play. It does not demand because it does not seek control. It doesn't want to control you. It wants you to invite it in. It does not overcome because it does not attack. There's nothing to attack. It doesn't attack your illusion. It merely reminds you, reminds you of the truth. It is compelling only because of what it reminds you of. It reminds you of your true self, the Holy Son of God self. It brings your mind the other, sorry, it brings to your mind the other way, right-minded way of remaining quiet, even in the midst of the term, turmoil you make, you make, you make. So remain quiet and know I am. If you have created, if you're experiencing conflict in this world, a conflicting mind switches on the TV and looks for war and picks a side and says, they're right and they're wrong, and attack. Why? You take that inherent guilt, you project it outwards, and then you attack it outside you. And that's why we make some, world makes so many war movies and, and good and bad, and it's always about murder, you know, shag, marry, kill, because it needs war, because it needs to pick a side. It needs to have a hero, the hero of the dream. Be still and know I am. No judgment. Watch without, try and watch a movie without picking a side. Try and watch a movie without identifying with someone in the screen. Try and watch a movie. And if someone murders someone, you just, it's just the movie. It's not real. Forgive, forgive, forgive. It's me. The reason I've switched this movie on is I needed it to sort of remind me of something. David Hoffmeister uses great movies, uses, uses movies to tell the story, to bring truth through his stories. Great. You must, if you ever have the time, please, please listen to David and, 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 and his movie nights. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and it's always so entertaining with David. 
The voice for God is always quiet. Hmm. And I love these people that say, well, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me to do this. The Holy Spirit doesn't tell you to do anything. Jesus doesn't speak into your mind and say, do this. These people are oh, channel Jesus. Uh, holy, holy brother, holy sister. You don't channel anything like the voice for God, which means you're channeling the memory of God. You, holy son, holy daughter. You're channeling the memory. There's no character Jesus talking to you. There's no character Holy Spirit talking to you or Zeus from the planet void or Abraham from the vortex talking to you. Dispel that magic nonsense. The angel appeared. Angel, filtered light, Holy Spirit. Spirit guide, filtered light, Holy Spirit. Stop labeling spirit. It is pure, pure love. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. The God that can be named is not the eternal God. The love that can be labeled is not love. but calls for love is love itself calling you to remember itself as love and abide in that. The voice for God is always quiet because it speaks of peace. And peace is stronger than war because it heals. War is division, not increase. War is division. Because you split yourself into two, two warring sides. Take a side. Build the defenses. Attack comes. Defenses are there to prevent attack. Attack is there to overcome defenses. In your defenselessness, your strength lies. No one gains from strife. What profit? Oh, this is beautiful because this is now repeating the Bible. What profit the man? This is one of the most wise sayings in the Bible. If he gained the whole world and lose his own soul, spirits. And this is one few times that the, that the course talks of soul. Soul meaning your passion. Okay, so in this context, soul is your passion. Your passion is your essential nature. The essential nature of spirit. What is spirit? The energy, the love of God. What is, what is the pro, what profit is there? If you gain the whole world, people, places, things, events, all the money in the world, okay? And you have no love of self or others. Because others are extensions of yourself. If you listen to the wrong voice, you have lost sight of your soul, your passion, your talent, your natural inherent knowing of yourself as the son of God. You cannot lose it, but you cannot know it. Therefore lost, okay, it's lost to you until you choose again. Choose right-minded. Choose by giving the authority of your mind to Holy Spirit. That's the invocation. Invite Holy Spirit in. It's not, yeah, take all this rubbish from me. It's invite and let me see all of this through your eyes and thus remember myself. The Holy Spirit is your guide in choosing. So in other words, it's your decision to have light guide you as opposed to the idea of separation. He is the, he is the part, not comes to you. He is the part of your mind. Okay, so he is a part of your mind. Therefore, you, that always speaks for the right choice because he speaks for God because he is the memory of God in you, reminding you that you are the extension of God's love. He is your remaining communication with God, which you can interpret, but you cannot destroy and you can interpret it incorrectly if you're strapped in the idea of them us and in separation the holy spirit the memory of god is the way in which god's will is done on earth as it is in heaven which is both within you because earth is just an idea of heaven within you both heaven and her earth are in you okay and of course one of them is going to dissolve when you're awakened because you are heaven itself, because the core of both is in your mind. Why is there both in your mind? Wrong-minded, earth, right-minded, you are the kingdom of heaven. The voice for God comes from your own altars to him. This is phenomenal. Listen to this, how he structures these sentences. Man, okay. The voice for God comes from your own altars to him. Okay. Another way of altar, devotion. In actual fact, it says it in the next line. These altars are no, not things. They are devotions. So how have you devoted to this world? What are your altars in this world? People, places, things, and events. What were mine? Motorcycles. 
ice cream, cigarettes, blah, mm, love cigarettes. What are your altars? Power, success, money, wealth. What are your altars to God? Peace, love, joy. The knowing of yourself through your brother and the complete acceptance of what is, because everything is an extension of the I am. I've got an extension of I am. I choose to remember it and see myself lovingly as the love of God, for I am the kingdom. I am the son. I am the holy son of God, which is his kingdom. I now choose to see it that way. So yet you have other devotions now, and now your dev divided devotion has given you two choices, and therefore two voices, and you must now choose at which altar do you want to serve. Okay, and You can see how easy the idea of Satan crept in, the devil, wrong mind, you know, the angel, right mind, both fighting for your soul, for your passion, your soul, your passion, because you are spirit. Soul is passion. What can you put into soul? What do you infuse soul with? The memory of God, Holy Spirit, or the idols of this world? The call you answer now is an evaluation because it is a decision. Choose correctly. The decision is very simple. It is made on the basis of which call is more worth to you. People, places, things, and events, or the joyous being of yourself as the love of God. My mind will always be like us. This is Christ Jesus talking to us. Because, please remember this and accept this, because we were created as equals, and therefore what God created remains as God created. it, And therefore we are equal because we come from the same mind, same son of God dreaming mind. It was only my decision that gave me all the power in the mind, heaven and earth, in the mind. My only gift to you is to help you make the same decision. Jesus saves us by bringing us into the awareness where we choose again. It's not the blood of Jesus saves you. It's not because he died for your sins that he saves you. It's because he resurrected and ascended as the Christ mind. And now gives you the opportunity to do the same following in his footsteps is saving the self as the self. The decision is the choice to share it because the decision itself is the decision to share. It is made by giving and is therefore the one choice that resembles true creation. So if you want to know an example, here it is. This is the example. My choice, rightfully or wrongfully, doesn't matter. You can judge it or not. You can think I'm a charlatan or you can think I'm blessed. It matters not. It pleasures me. It gives me the greatest joy to be able to share this knowing with myself. Whether one is listening or a hundred million matters not because I'm doing it for my self-knowing. The more I do this, the more I share it, the more I contemplate upon it, reflect upon it, and then bring it into words and share it, the more I grow joyously. And if you want a measurement of it, well, I have nothing to gain because I don't charge a single cent for this. It's just I get so much joy out of sharing because the more I share it, the more I know I have it. And it makes me happy. And even if I'm completely delusional and eat a white beautiful jacket that zips up in the back or straps up in the back and live in a nice four by four cushy white padded cell, I'm still happier for it. And what's the point of having the world but being unhappy? And I've had it all. Had people, places, things, and events, every possible conceivable toy didn't make me happy. And this, this is my happiness. And so I am your decision. Okay, I am your model for decision. So Jesus becomes the the demonstration of what it appears to be Christ's mind, awakened God mind in this world. By deciding for God, I showed you that this decision can be made and that you can make it and that you can make it and that you too shall move mountains if you have the faith in the self the side of a mustard seed. I have assured you that the mind that decided for me is also in you. Because okay, it's the same mind. We are of one mind. One mind wrapped us all up. And that you can let it change you just as it changed me. It's not you change your mind. 
you allow your mind to be changed by placing the Holy Spirit, the memory for God, in control and authority of your mind. You give it guardianship. Holy Spirit, be the guardian of my mind. So you cannot dissolve your dream because you made it, but you can allow it to be done for you by your willingness to let it all go and truly only ask for the one thing that you really always wanted, which is to be happy. And to be happy is to know that you are the kingdom of God. Because what would make any person happier than to know we are God's love. And therefore, we are love. The mind, the mind is unequivocal because it hears only one voice and only answers in one way. Now, you have to choose which one, but it can only listen to one. You are the light in, of the world with me. Christ is the light of the world. And you are the light of the world with Christ. Rest does not come from sleep, but from waking, even though I know some people love to sleep eight, 10, 12 hour days. You know, I wish I could sleep longer than four or five hours, but I get a lot more from absorbing this than dreaming of um, whatever I dream of. The Holy Spirit is the call to awaken and be glad. The memory of God, read this line, the memory of God is the call to awaken and be glad. The world is very tired. The illusion is very tired because it is the idea of weariness. It's the idea of untruth. Our task is the joyous one of waking to the call for God. Everyone will answer the call of the Holy Spirit. or well, the sonship cannot be a one and everybody will answer. What better vocation could there be for any part of the kingdom, you, than to restore it to perfect integration it can make it whole. Because remember, you are the kingdom. Hear only this thought, the Holy Spirit within you. And teach your brothers to listen as I am teaching you. When you are tempted by the wrong voice, by the ego, call on me to remind you how to heal by sharing my decision and making it stronger in you as you. As we share this goal, which we do, whether you remember it or not, we increase its power to attract the whole sonship and to bring it back into the oneness in which it was created. The oneness, because there is only one dreamer. Remember that the yoke means to join. And this is a Bible reference again. Okay, to join together. And burden means message. So when Jesus says in the Bible, my yoke is easy and my burden is and my burden light, what he's really saying is, let us join together for my message is light. And how come this message is light? Because it's a call to be the joyous essence of God. I've enjoined you to behave as I behave, lovingly, no miracle mindedness, not seeing separation, but truly knowing your brother as yourself. But we must respond to the same mind to do this, right mind, the Holy Spirit mind. This mind is the Holy Spirit. Let me say this often. Your mind is the Holy Spirit. You are therefore the Holy Spirit. You are therefore the Son of God. You are therefore the Christ. You are therefore the kingdom of God, whose will is for God always, only. There's no always, eternity, always only. Just a part of you still dreaming. He teaches you how to keep me as the model for your thought. No judgment model. To behave like me as a result, no judgment. The power of our joint motivation is beyond belief, but not beyond accomplishment, because it will be and can be and will be accomplished. What we can accomplish together has no limits, because the call for God is the call to the unlimited you, the unlimited. Child of God, my message is for you to hear it and to give it away, hear it and give it away as you answer the Holy Spirit within you because you are God's Holy Spirit, you are his kingdom. And how can this not be joyous? You'll want to share this because sharing the idea of love is extending and expanding the idea of love and that extending and expanding is true creation and that is our real purpose to continually extend and expand the joyous love, which is God. 
I'll stop there for a second or two and take some questions. And now we move into um, the fourth section of chapter five, the guide to salvation. Again, guide, capitalized, Holy Spirit. The way to recognize your brother is by recognizing the Holy Spirit in him. And of course, it's still talking in and out, but in essence, realizing that the memory, the essence of every single living being, thing in this entire universe, the essence, the very core of it, the truth of it all is the same truth as you, is the same self, and therefore is ignited by the remembrance, memory of God called Holy Spirit. I've already said that the Holy Spirit is the bridge or the transfer of perception to knowledge. So we can use the term as if it was as if they were related. Because in his mind, they are. So it brings you from preception, judgment, the not knowing, to the knowing, knowledge. So from perception, perception to knowledge. This relationship must be in his mind. Because unless it were, the separation between the two ways of thinking would not be open to healing. We would have been trapped had God not come into the, God's Holy Spirit not come into the dream. And we would be trapped in wrong minded dream because we've made it and our will is all powerful because it's given us to us by God. And so we would continue to create an illusion, not having a way back to remembering our source. So the Holy Spirit is he's part of the Holy Trinity because his mind is partly yours and also partly God's because the Holy Spirit mind capital is your mind and therefore the extension of God's mind. This needs clarification, not in statement, but in experience. And that's why there's nothing worse than someone regurgitating text, never having been in that state of, <laughs> there's the word missing, um, the elation of the knowing of one's self as the love of God. And, and because ideas leave not their mind and you are an idea in God's mind, a idea, a thought, thought in form, taken form when you decide that you weren't what you are. The Holy Spirit is an idea of healing. Being thought, the idea gains as it's shared. Why? Because again, you're extending, you're creating. Being the call for God, memory of God, call for God. It's also the idea of God in your mind as the extension you are. Since you are a part of God, not a part from, a part of, it's also the idea of yourself because yourself now becomes a part of God, an extension of God, since God is always extending, as well as all of his creations, true creation not this world we've made, not this universe we've made. The idea of the Holy Spirit shares the property of other ideas because it follows the law of the universe of which it is a part. It is strengthened by being given away. It increases in you as you give it to your brother. You can hear it in my voice as I'm sharing it. I'm lifted in the joy of sharing. Therefore, I'm lifted in the joy of being. Your brother does not have to be aware of, of, of the Holy Spirit in himself or in you for this miracle to happen, okay, to occur. He may have dissociated okay, the call for God, just as you have and, and you're here in body-mind. This, is, this association, which is a typical experience of an empath, they, they, their thinking becomes feeling sensation, and the feeling sensation becomes so overwhelming they close off to the world. They shut the world out and don't want anything to do. They hate mankind, love their animals, hate mankind, hate their creation. Dissociation is hell. Associating all as self is the path to healing, is the path to heaven. This dissociation is healed in both you, both of you, as you become aware of the call for God in him and thus acknowledging, acknowledging its being as you, the beingness in all of us. 
there are two diametrically opposed ways of seeing your brother. They are they both must be in your mind because you are the perceiver. You you perceiving it. You pre before you judge it. Okay. They must also be in his because you are perceiving him, and therefore you, the dreamer, perceives both of you, and then you localize from what you call you point of view, and he localizes you localize from his point of view and call him himself but it's all you seen through him. Okay. See him through the Holy spirit in his mind. So the love of me recognizes the love in you. The I am in me recognizes the I am in you for it's one singular. I am the self in both of us is the same, the same self as the self of God. See him through the Holy spirit in his mind and you will recognize him in yours. So to know yourself, you need to know your brother and to know your brother is knowing yourself. What you acknowledge in your brother, you are acknowledging in yourself. Eventually, it will capitalize the self because there's only one self. And what you share, you're strengthened. So strengthen the knowing in both of you. And you'll see over time, your enemies become less enemy. And before you know it, you love them and you appreciate them. The voice of the Holy Spirit is weak in you. It's weak in all of us. So we must share it. That's why we must share it. It must be increased in strength before you can hear it. Okay, so as you're sharing it and go still, it becomes knowing to you. It is impossible to hear it in yourself while it is so weak in your mind. It is not weak of itself, but it is limited by your will and willingness to hear it. Why? Because you're trapped in the idea of wrong-minded illusion of the world. If you make the mistake of looking for the Holy Spirit in yourself alone, your thoughts will frighten you because by adopting the ego's viewpoint, you are undertaking an ego alien journey with the ego as its guide. And this is bound to produce fear. So right-minded is the only way to embark on any journey. Before you leave the house, invite them in. Before you do anything, invite them in. Before you have a conversation with your boss, your colleague, invite them in. Lead the way. Show me another way to see this. The layers of the ego. Because time is its concept loves time and both time and delay are meaningless in eternity eternity always here now i have said before that the holy spirit is god's answer to the ego everything of which the holy spirit reminds you of is in direct opposition to the ego's notions because true and false perceptions are themselves opposed and this is what the war is all about the wars are always between egos and never between good and bad, light and darkness. War is always in darkness between two opposing wills in darkness. What about right-minded and wrong-minded? There's no war between light and darkness. The Holy Spirit has the task of undoing what the ego has made, the world of bodies, the world of forms. He undoes it at the same level on which the ego operates. So it's the undoing, the reversing of the mind or the mind would be unable to understand the change, wouldn't grasp it. I wouldn't even be able to explain it because it has to happen on the word levels of words, ideas, thoughts, and physicality. Mm -hmm. I have repeatedly emphasized that the one level of the mind is not understandable by the other. Right-minded cannot know wrong-minded. It doesn't exist. It only knows itself as right mind. And ego cannot transcend itself into right-mindedness. So it is with the ego and the Holy Spirit with time and eternity. Eternity is an idea of God. Eternity is always now. And so the Holy Spirit understands it perfectly. Time is the belief of the ego. So eternity, God, time, ego. So the belief in time is ego, lower mind, ego mind, which is the ego's domain, accepts it without question. The only aspect of time that is eternal is now. So Eckhart Tolle would say this often. Marion William have used, have used this line often. The only aspect of time that is eternal is now. Wayne Dyer used to teach this often. And Wayne, Marion Williamson, they're all scholars. Eckhart Tolle, all scholars of A Course in Miracles. So now you know where it's coming from. It sounded so profound. Now you know it's Holy Spirit is teaching us all the same thing. So we're all really teaching the same thing. Why? Because we're all the same. The Holy Spirit is the mediator, so it joins the two, brings the, joins the two and dissolves the two. So let's imagine a dark room and a light room. 
Holy Spirit joy is the door between. So it opens the room, the room door, and the light floods into the dark room. And now all of a sudden, the dark room is no longer dark because the light has flown into it. Can darkness flow into light? No, because there's no thing to flow. It's empty. The Holy Spirit is the mediator between the interpretations of the ego and the knowledge of spirit. So knowledge is not of ego. True knowledge is only a spirit, and it's not explainable because it's the knowing of oneself, the beingness, which is the isness, which is, there's no word. His ability to deal with symbols enables him to work with the ego's beliefs in its own language, ideas, thoughts, and so on, prejudices. His ability to look beyond symbols into eternity enables him to understand the laws of God for which he speaks. He can therefore perform the function of reinterpreting what the ego makes. See, it's not, it's not destroying it. It doesn't destroy the universe. He re reinterprets what the ego makes. Because what you see as molecules, people, places, things, and events, matter is actually misperceived, misprojected, idea of self doesn't actually exist but what you see is not just illusion to be written off it's the realization what i'm seeing is a reflection of how i see myself an outer picture of an inner condition not by destruction but by understanding understanding is light you know, so those that write the in sentences in love and light love and understanding understanding is the purity of understanding light. Understanding is light. That's vital that you get that because it explains it further as well. But you yourself do not know this. It is therefore the task of the Holy Spirit, the memory of God, to re re reinterpret it on your behalf of God. You cannot understand yourself alone. Why? Because you made yourself. So you're trapped in the maze of your own making. This is because you have no meaning apart from your rightful place in the sonship as the Holy Son of God. And the rightful place of the sonship is God. The rightful place of the sonship is God. So it's not God in you. It's you in God as his extension. This is, again, an amazing sentence coming up here, highlighted in purple, just for effect. This is your life your eternity and your self. This is the true essence of what you are. It is of this the Holy Spirit reminds you. The memory of God is reminding the Son of what he is. It is this the Holy Spirit sees. Seeing is an expression because sees nothing. There's nothing to see, to be. This vision frightens the ego because it is it, because it is so calm. Peace is the ego's greatest enemy because according to its interpretation of reality, war is a guarantee of its symbol. It needs conflict. It needs hurt. It needs pain. It needs suffering for it to stay alive, to, for it to believe it's real. The ego becomes strong in strife. If you believe there is strife, you will react viciously because the idea of danger has entered your mind. The idea is is an appeal to the ego. The Holy Spirit is as vigilant as the ego to the call of danger, opposing it with its strength as the ego welcomes it. The Holy Spirit counters his welcome by welcoming peace. Eternity and peace are as closely related as time and war. Okay. So eternity is peace as time is war. Perception derives meaning from relationships. So we need special love relationships to derive meaning and purpose and function in this world. And yet, look at it from a Holy Spirit and self-relationship. Those you accept are the foundations of your beliefs. You know? God, country, whatever. You, know? you see this so many in the movies. And for first, you know, first God, then family, then country. You're ranking it all. It's all you. The separation is merely another term for a split mind. The ego is the symbol of separation, just as the Holy Spirit is the symbol of peace. Okay, so like the dove, Holy Spirit, the symbol of peace. What you perceive in others, you are strengthening in yourself. So if you see egos, you believe in an ego. If you see bodies, you believe in a body. And then, then you go into defend attack. So if you perceive Holy Spirit in others, perceive, prejudge, and therefore project. So you choose to see. It's a choice of seeing. 
what you perceive in others, you then perceive in yourself. So I choose to see you holy. I choose to see myself holy. I've knowingly become it. You may let your mind misperceive, but the Holy Spirit lets your mind reinterpret its own misperception. So it's seeing a new, a new earth, realizing everything I look upon is me. I can move mountains, but I, what am I moving? Myself. What's the need to move anything that is not real? Just knowingly be. And therefore, the Holy Spirit is the perfect teacher. He uses only what your mind already understands, concepts, ideas, fractions, and fractures, okay, to teach you what that you do not understand it. So it's quite clever. It takes everything you know and then makes you realize you don't know nothing. So let it all go. Surrender. Empty your cup. Because what you know is illusion. You can, you, can do, you can write doctorates on illusion. You can go into Maslow and you can go into Jung and Freud and you can animu and animus until you come, the cows come home and you can fracture personality traits and Myers-Briggs and Strengths Finder and 34 talents, good and bad. What do you know? Illusions return to the self. Holy Spirit can deal with a reluctant learner without going counter to his mind. Why? Because you immediately resist it. Because part of it is still for God. So it just, just gently like a rule goes in there and starts to realign. And it realigns faster and faster and faster. The more you're willing to let go of your belief, empty the cup. Despite the ego's attempts to conceal this part, it is still much stronger than the ego. Okay? So despite the ego's attempts to conceal this part, the Holy Spirit is much stronger than the ego although the ego does not recognize it. So I've explained this to you in a previous talk. So the Holy Spirit is the light that calls, like the light, the flame that calls the moth to it, circulates it. And by the time the moth touches the flame too late, it spontaneously combusts and becomes part of the flame. As much as the moth loves the flame, wants the flame, it fears the flame. So it just gently tricks the mind and says, return to me, return to me, return to me. Return, tricks the mind by giving you proof that this is the right way to go, by giving you positive proof of the joyous nature of returning to self. The Holy Spirit recognizes it perfectly because it is his own dwelling place as you are God's holy dwelling place, the place in the mind where he is at home in the kingdom of heaven. You are at home there too, okay? You are at home in their temple too, because it is a place of peace and peace is of God because God resides as the peace in you. You are who you who are a part of God are not at home except in his peace because his peace is home. If peace is eternal, timeless, then you are at home only in eternity. Okay? If peace is eternal, you are always in eternity, which is your home. Timelessness, here now. Ego made the world as it perceives it, but the Holy Spirit, the reinterpreter of what the ego made, sees the world as a teaching device for bringing you home or bringing your awareness that you've never actually left. The Holy Spirit must perceive time and reinterpret it into timelessness. So it doesn't actually exist, just the appearance of it. Time is the appearance of, is, is the interpretation of now, and space is the interpretation of here, here now. So be here now means be presently in eternity in the knowing of yourself as God's holy son. He must work through opposites because he must wait, remember it's split mind, because he must wait, sorry, he must work with and for a mind that is in opposition. Correct and learn and be open to learning people hate learning because they fear learning because it means change you have not made truth but truth can still set you free and does and it is look as the holy spirit looks and understand as he understands his understanding looks back to god in remembrance of me christ's mind he is in communion with god always and he is part of you ourself he is the guide to salvation because he holds the memory, the remembrance of things past and to come and brings them into the present. Okay, in other words, collapsing them, making them the joyous being of now. In other words, letting go of everything that is not pure, anything that is not love, and only bringing past 
and things to come, which is love in through the awareness here. Now, he holds this gladness gently in your mind, asking only that you increase it in his name by sharing it to increase his joy in you. So you increase it in others and you increase it in you and you increase it in all of that, which is the sunshine. And so how can it not benefit you to be joyously that which you are and choose to see your brother in the same way? Because as you choose to see it, it proves it for you. As it proves it for you, it accelerates it. It grows it in you, extends in you. The more you extend, the more you want to share, the more you share, it gets shared with you. And so you knowingly become Christ mind, awakened self. The flow is the self. You, the, the heart becomes the kingdom. The kingdom is then extended as you share it with all of yourself. And it just extends, keeps extending, and it just loops and loops and loops and just grows in the knowing that you are the son God loves, the kingdom of heaven itself. Let's we'll stop there. And uh, next week we will continue with um, text chapter five teaching from five onwards, from section five onwards.